The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Monday morning, just after 9 a.m. Eastern time as we kick things off. you got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. And right now you're looking at markets pulling back from quite the month that we had in July. Just for a moment, I'm going to throw things on a monthly chart just to illustrate the move we had. Now, i got some drawings on there but i mean check out the run folks you're talking about a low in july of 37.23 you're talking about a high basically closing at those highs okay we close within 12 11.5 points to be exact we closed within almost 10 points of the high of the month and you're talking about closing 400 points off of the lows of the month that we had just keep it in context man that's about 10 percent more than a 10 percent 11 12 percent up from where we were at the uh, lows just of july market bouncing for the first time in a while but man we'll see where we go from here a lot of optimism to deliver from last week and today we can kick things off giving back some of those gains s and p's right now you're negative by about seven tenths percent you check out the acceleration right where are we back to? We're almost right back to the open. We're right back to the first 15 minutes of trading on Friday, folks. 4100 is the mark, 4105. You make it as high as 4144. NASDAQ 100, we're negative by about 71 points. That's about half a percent. You got the Dow off about half a percent as well, 32,660. The Russell off by 14 points. Russell had quite a run last week as well. Bitcoin. Holding up relatively well. You almost got a 25,000 print on Bitcoin last week. Right now, we're trading at 23,160. You jump over to crude. Look at that acceleration, man. Friday from 101.88 to crude at 94.07. And folks, we got a treat. We're going to be talking to our man, Teddy Kegstat, at 40 past the hour today. Because today is the last day that you can save 25% off the Tiger Forex report, folks. We're doing this for the entire month of July through August 1st. Today's the last day. Teddy's coming on. Absolutely great day to talk to him anyway. You got some real action in crude right now. We got some action in the dollar index. We'll jump over. So we'll talk to Teddy at 40 past the hour. And we'll still talk to him on Wednesday as well this week. We get double duty from our man Teddy Kegstad. Gold contract catching a bid this morning up to 1792. We give it back a little bit, a little bit of volatility on that gold contract right now. You get the silver contract positive as well. We were as high as 2051, and we jump to the all important notes and bonds. You get the 10 year this morning up three ticks, 12108. The 30 year right now negative by eight ticks. You see the acceleration though. I mean, look at what we have going on, folks. Just in the last 15 minutes, you have the year 30 year. I mean, the moves are just amazing. Yeah, the 30-year go from 143.20, okay? I mean, look at these bars. These are 15-minute bars, and you're talking about 19 ticks in the bar, and then we get it all back. We're back to 143.24. You take a look at the 10-year, the volatility. These moves are not usually the case, folks. I know it seems like that's the case in terms of the moves that we're getting right now, but you're talking about a 10-year that just dives down. What are we talking about? What, 5, 10, like 12 ticks, and then gets it all back within an hour? Those are some pretty big moves ordinarily, but right now, the 10-year yield, 2.64%. 2.64%. Remember when we were, gonna, we were pushing 3.5%? 2.64% on the 10-year, and we jump over to the VIX. Quite a reprieve last week. We make it to 21.21 on the week, on the finish last week. That low, I mean, you talk about a slide, folks, from the middle of June. We had six weeks there, Okay. Some dicey action coming into a pretty lofty level where optimism is uh, very high right now when we are still in the thick of a lot of volatility with some pretty staggering CPI numbers. We get non-farm payrolls this week on Friday. We get CPI data on next week. So it comes at us pretty quickly. It just doesn't stop, along with many companies with earnings. We'll go into those later in the week as well. Uh, but checking out the S&Ps real quick. I was looking at this chart on Friday, right? I mean, we're blowing through the 382 of the entire move lower. The one thing here is that, you know, when we got to that 382, that was also correlating to the highs we had back in May. I mean, the area you got to get through here, folks, is 3200. 
right? We're going to have a lot of headwind at 3,200, man, right? Let alone if you ever get up to 4,300. You get up to 4,300, you're talking about January prices, folks. January prices, yeah, it's 500 points off the high. But in the context of where we've come from, where we've been, and how long that bull run took us to 4,808, you're talking about a market that now sits within 700 points of the all-time highs. On the Dow, you get over it. The Dow's sitting right at that 382. We back things up on a three-year weekly to see the entire run higher from COVID. Uh, excuse me, NASDAQ, not the Dow, the NASDAQ. Uh, yeah, excuse me, that's the 382. No, this thing hasn't bounced as much. So this is at the 382 pullback. What I've been checking out is where have we bounced to, okay? So let's put this back on a daily. And from the basically the, the beginning of the year, when the run started, because these markets are all catching quite a bounce. But, I mean, check it out. The NASDAQ 100 hasn't even bounced to the 382. You're still about 250 points away from that price level, 13,174. And that price level in the NASDAQ is going to run you right into the lows we had from March. Now we jump to the Dow. Okay. And on the Dow, I'll take this off here. I mean, it's pretty remarkable that basically the highs are almost the first of the year. The Dow blowing past that 382 level. Inching towards the 50%, the 50% of the Dow be 33,211. So again, S&P's just over the 382, but all of them are going to bump in. Let's see. So S&P's in March, you're going to bump into that area right kind of where we closed on Friday. You know, 4,100 to 4,200 is a tough zone in the S&P, man. You're bumping up against the highs that we had in early June. You're bumping up against the lows that we had in early March. And you're also bumping up against this area consolidation that we had from basically April 22nd to May 6th when we started going lower yet again. That's going to be an area that's going to be a tough one to get through. 4,200. You should be very happy if you're a bull with 4,200 in this market considering the economic numbers that continue to print uh, from inflation, etc. NASDAQ not quite up to that level, but you see it. I mean, we did get above this area in June on the NASDAQ, which was remarkable to say the least. I thought that was going to be a little headwind, and maybe it is. It's an art, not a science, folks. We're pretty close to that level. The highs on that level were June 3rd, at 12,945, we're already under that level. Is that right? Yes, and we close there at 12,000, no, excuse me. Yeah, that's right. So you're talking about a high of 12,945, we're already, is that right, what am I? Seems like that bar is not, yeah, it is 12,945, we're already under that level. We did get above there, okay, NASDAQ, 13,000 we got up to. So you got just above it. We're already back under it in the NASDAQ. We'll see where we go from there. Let's check out some of the FANG stocks as we got a minute coming into the break right now. Amazon, quite a week of earnings last week in terms of they come out, they trade higher, they close the gap Amazon had from April. Now, Amazon, you know, you're bumping into an area of support turning into potential resistance here. You got the lows from January, you get the lows from whether it's February, the lows of March. You also got the gap area that this just closed from April. Uh, we were as low as 101 on a few occasions, folks. So Amazon, you know, you're up 35%. You're up 30% on Amazon prices from whether you were in May. May. June. June. And July. Right? We made it as low, folks. July. 106. And we're trading this morning at 135 for Amazon. Might need a little bit of consolidation area here as you bump into an area that's struggled. Uh... An area of support, as we say, turning into resistance potentially at about 140. And we jump over to Apple shares this morning. Apple trading lower a little bit. Stay tuned, folks. We come right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. 
everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the markets negative by about three quarters percent right now in the S and P's. Jumping back to a short-term time frame chart, you see the acceleration we got going on right now, inching towards that 4100 mark. In terms of Europe right now, you have the DAX basically flat, the FTSE barely in the green, CAC Corolla will call it flat as well. Over in Asia, positive territory, Nikkei up about seven tenths percent, Shanghai up about two tenths percent, Hang Seng will call it flat as well. All right, jumping around to a couple articles in terms of what we're going to talk about here. Uh, where do we kick things off? Let's say. Uh, well, we'll kick it off with a little opinion piece on Bloomberg because I think it makes you think, rightfully so. And I don't agree with everything, anything. Uh, Mohammed Al Arian, pretty notable uh, opinion writer over at Bloomberg. Um, and I'm just talking about the data that he puts out, folks. The fundamental data, okay, because it's very important to process what we just got here. We just got the market recoiling, thinking the Fed has recalibrated. Maybe they'll pause, right? Maybe the hikes won't be as severe as maybe we're thinking. You know, there was a real worry that the Fed was going to telegraph that they're going to bring it with 75 basis points or 50 basis points until the market proves that inflation's over, something like that. That is not what the chairman said of the Federal Reserve during his press conference last week. Nonetheless, the economic data is pretty harsh. And all the chairman really said was that they're going to be data dependent. And I talked about it on the program. I was talking about it with my dad last week as well, saying, there's really no other real way, if he's being authentic, to forecast. There is so much up in the air before their next meeting, folks. If they came out with guidance, yes, the market would have paid attention because that's where their head is. They should pay attention. But, you know, it's a big fundamental conversation we're having right now. But you have to understand that I think the market is too excited in the short term over the prospect that you have the, a Federal Reserve that is not intent on hiking until they see the data. But nonetheless, folks, you got to recognize that the data, okay, might force their hand. And if you look at the data, the data is pretty harsh right now. All right. I mean, July's data was where we got 
Okay. Now, number one, we got a return of 12%. He goes over some of the returns that we got. Okay, 12% in the NASDAQ Composite Index in the month of July. And that same month, we got 9.1% in, excuse me, 9.1% inflation as measured by the CPI. We get CPI next week. We got negative GDP growth, 0.9% for the second quarter. We got a drop in real incomes and diminished household savings. We did have company after company warning of inflation. We saw some write downs in terms of uh, expectations for those numbers as well. All right, and they get into some, one of the other articles that I'm hearing, earnings season. Yes, I'm going to tie these two together, okay, because he talks about the earnings revisions. Downgrades outnumber upgrades by the most since 2020. Now, there's almost data out there for everybody, folks, which is why this is such a tough market right now. Um, no matter what data we get, it seems like it allows for many narratives to be vindicated with that data. Uh, this is one example, right? Downgrades outnumber upgrades by the most since 2020. But, but if you want to play the other side of that, 52% the rate of earnings that beat. Is that right? Yes. No, excuse me. 56% of S&P 500 companies have reported earnings so far, and more than half have beaten estimates. Okay, so yeah, 52% of companies have beat estimates of the 56 that they've reported. So we're just halfway through, just more than halfway through earnings season, okay? 52% have beat earnings above the long-term average of 47%. More companies are beating earnings right now than historically the average. Well, that's a good case, but guess what? The number that it was at over the last five quarters was 62%, so it's definitely down. And then you have the downgrades, outnumbering upgrades by the most since 2020, okay? So it's all over the place. When you look at the data, um, which is really all I was going to talk about versus just Mohammed El Arian's position, uh, I mean, he makes some cases, folks, in here. You know, and you want to get everybody's opinion right now, folks, because it is very difficult for anybody to be pegging what's going on. Uh, one thing he talked about in here was the IMF. Yeah. So he talks about, you know, you have the IMF cutting its growth projection for 2022 by 0.4 percentage points to 3.2, a significant amount for a mid-year revision and by 0.7% to 2.9 for 2023. It also revised up its inflation forecast and warned of po uh, possible financial and debt problems. The terms they used were gloomy and more uncertain. And he did work for 15 years at that fund. And uh, in his opinion, the words gloomy are not something they use lightly. Take that for what it's worth. The data in that article, though, when you add it up and then you compare it to the percentage returns that we have, what I talked about last week, okay, this data that we're going to get going forward, as in July's data, as we start getting it, and we start getting it, the big numbers on Friday, we get other data as well. We get earnings this week. We're not even, uh, we're about halfway through earnings, as I just said. So those are going to come as well. We got through the biggest tech companies, man. When I was talking to Kevin Hinks last week, I was saying it almost feels like we just got to get through them. And we did better than that, man. Apple, right? You come into last week at about 154. We're at 161. Let's check out early in the week. We got Microsoft and Google, okay? Microsoft comes into the week at about 260. We ended 280 almost, all right? Google comes into the week at 108. We end at 115. Amazon, 120. We're at 135. Apple, 152 to 162. Uh, some of the companies that were not as beneficial... One of the big fallouts, Roku. Yeah, I would I would be very careful, folks. Uh, one of the only plays in Roku, you think somebody might buy them. That's one position that you could take on that thing. They fall out of bed from 85 to 60. I think they missed something like revenue was expected to be 900 million, and they're going to look for about 700 million. I talked about my program last week. You don't miss on revenue forecast by 30% often, folks. Now, Intel had a big miss, too. I think they missed by about 15%. You see the haircut they took. Uh, their CEO was out there basically pleading the case, please recognize that this is the low and we will do better. Not exactly indicative of strong leadership when you're out there saying, we know it's bad, but that's going to be the worst of it. This chart doesn't say the worst of it, folks. This is a pretty solid downtrend channel that we got going on Intel right now. You just hit a low of 35.24. We back things up for a five-year weekly. That's bringing us back to where we were in 2017 prices for Intel. Folks, that's more than five. That's five years ago for a chip company. Okay? Comparatively, there's AMD. 
from about eight or nine bucks up to one sixty four. Not exactly a fair comparison. Obviously, lots going on, uh, but Intel, man, for a company like that. Now, Roku was only talking about $900 billion. They shaved it down to about $700 billion. I think Intel's forecast was something like from $19 billion to, to $17 or something like that. You're talking about billions of dollars just disappearing to the tune of 15% of their revenue overnight from their forecast. Uh, and, yeah, they trade down to a recent low on Intel at thirty-five twenty-four. So we get earnings this week. We get jobs number on Friday. We get CPI next week. If the Fed's going to be data dependent, folks, we got less than four minutes to go until the opening bell. We'll come back. We'll take a look at some of the companies coming out with earnings this week. Again, we're going to be talking to our man Teddy Kegstat after the next break, 40 past the hour. We'll be talking to him. Please, folks, the last day to do it. Check out the Tiger Forex report. Teddy's got a new report out this morning. OK, so you instantly gain access to that. We'll be talking to Teddy at 40 past the hour. Uh, we'll talk a little bit of Forex. We'll talk a little bit of crude as crude. Quite a pullback we got going on in this crude market right now. Off almost five bucks, you're under 94. But here's the thing, man, we've been down to this level before, right? We've been down to this level before. This seems like a critical area in that crude contract, pushing 93 to $94. We'll see where we go from there. Gas prices a little bit down, can't deny that one. Stay tuned, folks, we'll be coming back right for the opening bell. booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open, and you're looking at an S&P. We opened down about 25 points right now. NASDAQ 100 gives back 73. The Dow gives back 156 from that acceleration we had. We kick off August with a little bit of negative action after quite a month to the upside in July. All right, jumping around to some of the other news I had pulled up here. Where are we going to start things off? Let's see. Let's start it off with, oh, is that it? Yeah, this earnings. So we talked about downgrades versus upgrades, okay? We're more than halfway through earnings season. 56% of the companies have reported their earnings. I'm gonna go over some of the companies that we got coming out this week. We got some good companies this week, man. Uh, more than half have beaten estimates. The long-term average is 47%, although recently that number's been as high as 62% in the last five quarters suggesting that stocks are not out of the woods yet, posting their strongest monthly rally since November of 2020. Uh, you got Morgan Stanley's Wilson out on a note saying that the rebound in stocks is likely to be short-lived as estimates are cut further and the economy heads into a contraction amid continued policy tightening by the Fed. It's kind of just giving both fundamental takes, right? That's an opinion, if I've ever heard one correct, as in, yes, it's an opinion, not if it's correct, Okay. But these are very important decisions as a longer term trader that you need to figure out for yourself, folks, because it's all going to depend on the data right now. The Fed is literally saying we got two months until the next meeting. Let's see what happens. And we're going to ride that horse, man. And we got CPI next week. We got jobs numbers this week. They're all going to matter. Keep your fingers tight on the, some of those trading days, folks. Uh, we think that the fourth quarter is the most likely time of the year when companies decide to kitchen sink the estimates. Fourth quarter. We're coming up on that, man. Uh, JP Morgan, looking a little bit of the other way, though. They're saying earnings expectations are finally likely to deteriorate in the second half. Revenues are still expected to rise. Okay, meaningfully. And any earnings weakness is unlikely to be material. That's JP Morgan. There's a lot of takes out there, nonetheless. All right, jumping over to some of the other headlines of the morning. We'll start it off with Apple. They're kicking off a four-part bond sale to fund buybacks and dividends. 40-year security may yield 150 basis points over treasuries. Uh, an Apple an Apple bond, probably just as good as a treasury. Maybe even you could make the case even more so. I kid a little bit, but depending who is in office. 40-year uh, security, earning 150 basis points over treasuries. Highest possible credit rating in December. I would say so, folks. I mean, they just got so much cash on hand. They are a cash machine. So they're going to push out it. The longest portion of that's going to be a 40-year. It's going to be four parts. The sale comes. Uh, yeah, it's been a tough one. Apple appears to be taking advantage of recent stability and relatively cheaper cost of funding in the high-grade market. I mean, look at their cash, man. Cash and liquid securities, $180 billion. That's a nice uh, cushion to have if you're buying paper from that company. Upgraded to AAA by Moody's, putting it in an exclusive club with Microsoft, Johnson & Johnson as the only U.S. corporations with the highest possible rating. Check that out, right? Microsoft, Johnson & Johnson, and Apple. Let's jump over to Microsoft, see how we're trading as these markets trade a little bit lower this morning. They're giving it back about $2.60. Keeping in mind, folks, Microsoft was at $2.50 coming into earnings. We're trading at $2.80. Okay? You're going to have some volatility when the markets do what they did last week. Very difficult to get so much upside action right now when the markets just traded up 12, 13, 14% in a period of a month. Yeah. Okay. Let's jump to some of the stocks that we got coming out with their numbers. We'll kick it off. What do we got? Let's see. On Monday, we get some companies. We got Kellogg's ahead of the O. Let's see how they opened. Kellogg's. They got their numbers? Is that right? Maybe? I think they are out. Maybe it's after the bell. We get Activision Blizzard. They're after the bell tonight. Pinterest, is that right? Let's jump over. Yeah, so Pinterest is going to be after the bell tonight. You talk about some volatility, man. From 90 bucks, 90 bucks again, 80 bucks just over a year ago. Somehow you got a spike in October to $66. And this is a one way trip, man. You're at 19 bucks. Down another 1% today. Pinterest out with their numbers after the bell today. They got about a $3 move priced into that equity. Now be careful, folks, on that one. Really remarkable that they are below where you came into prices in terms of the pandemic. And Pinterest back to the 
2020 year. How do these companies give it all back, right? It's so one thing to give it all back, but then to give it all back and then some, remarkable. All right, Tuesday, we really get into some of the bigger stocks. Let's see, we got Caterpillar out with their earnings on Tuesday. What do we got here for Fibonacci? What have I been, what have I been drawing? Uh, yeah, looking for some of these bounces, potentially, in terms of where we may run into some resistance. Caterpillar jumps right up to the 50%. They're out with their numbers on Tuesday. You're talking about an $8.77 move priced into their numbers. We also get JetBlue with their numbers on Tuesday. This thing's been in trouble, man. Now they're going to be buying, what, Spirit, right? You're at 839 down about a third of a percent. Yeah, we get Uber and Marriott as well. Uber, it's been a tough go around, man. You're sitting at 23.16. Uber, out with their numbers on Tuesday, more than a 10% move priced into that equity. So they continue to struggle coming out of the pandemic. And what else did I say? We get Marriott as well on Tuesday. Decent bounce going on. Let's see where we're dealing with. I mean, what's going on is, folks, some of these bounces, right? We're going to get some tradable areas here. You've got quite a bounce going on on some... I mean, look at Marriott's almost up to the 618, man, of just the move we had from June 6th to June 20th. You traded from 180 to 135, and we've jumped to the 618. Pretty remarkable. Marriott out with their numbers on Tuesday as well. And I think that's all before the bell I just talked about. I mean, there's so many companies. Let me pick even some of the better ones here. We get AMD and Airbnb. I just talked about AMD. I mean, I don't know. This is a tough one. Let's take a trend line here for AMD. Have we broken out of that? That's a critical area right where we're at right now. You could say pushing the upper boundary. Maybe we did get above it. It's a pretty well-defined channel line that AMD is in right now, even to the bottom side of it. Pretty well-defined. We're bumping up. Maybe you let it go over there, come back, test that line for AMD. But AMD, they're going to be out with their numbers. Yeah, Tuesday after the bell as well, about $6.56 move. They follow Intel with their dismal earnings. We get EA, Electronic Arts, right? Yeah, EA, they'll be out with their numbers. You're talking about an $8.57 move. I mean, listen to these companies. Now I'm going to drive. We had Starbucks as well. Let's check out Airbnb. So it's a big week of earnings. Look at all these companies, man. Airbnb, this thing's had quite a pullback, man. You go IPO. I think this blue line is when they went IPO. Is that right? Yeah, I think that blue line is when they went IPO. I'm not sure of that. I'll have to peg that. But it's pretty close because that's the first week that they traded. You jump up to 219. And, yeah, you're only back to 108. But Airbnb, they'll be out with their numbers on Tuesday. They sure will. And Starbucks will be out with their numbers on Tuesday as well. Yeah, Starbucks sitting at 84 bucks. All right, folks, stay tuned. We got the S&Ps down by 30 right now. Let's check in on the crew contract. This is going to be a great segment. We're coming back with our man Teddy Kegstad. We got crude off $5.38 right now. We just hit a 92 handle on crude. We got some dollar action. We got notes and bonds. What are we talking about right now? We got the 10-year up four ticks. Talking about a yield, about 2.65%. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back with Teddy. EFNN has been your trusted source of analysis for bonds, metals, stocks, commodities, and options for years. And we are happy to announce that we are bringing that same caliber of analysis for the Forex market. Teddy Kekstat has 30 plus years of experience in Forex trading, commodity risk management, Forex hedging, volatility, and so much more. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with elite coverage of all major currency pairs, including the DXY, Euro Dollar, Pound Dollar, Aussie Dollar, dollar yen, dollar Swiss franc, and so much more. Teddy will recommend specific trades when the market presents them and provide updates throughout the week when warranted. For the month of July, inaugural members to the Tiger Forex Report will receive 25% off the monthly subscription for as long as they're subscribed. Just use promo code TEDDY25 to lock in the added savings. This offer is good only for the month of July, so do not miss your opportunity to save on the Tiger Forex Report. TFNN, educating investors. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. 
His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps. You're negative by 17 points right now, trading down four tenths percent. And folks, head on over to the front page of TFNN. We're going to talk to our man, Teddy Kegstat, right now. We always talk to Teddy on Wednesdays at 40 past the hour, but we got a privilege. We're talking to him on Monday this week as well. We'll talk to him Wednesday as well. We're talking to him, folks, because today is the last day that you can sign up and save 25% for the Tiger Forex report on the front page of TFNN, folks. You head on over, you click that button. The important part, when you subscribe, folks, just enter code, I'm gonna show you real quick before we talk to Teddy. Enter code TEDDY25, right in the promo code slot there. You hit add the code, that's 25% off, folks. It brings you down to 72.75, I believe, check my math, I think that's right. You save 24 bucks and a quarter every month, folks, 25% off, and that stays with you forever. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if it's not something you're trading with, it's not something you have the time for, you don't like it for any reason, you get a money-back guarantee if you cancel, and best case is you stay on and you lock that in forever, folks. You're saving more than $24 every month for the life of your subscription. And Teddy, it's an interesting one. Before we get into the market, though, I got to know, how is Lollapalooza, man? Oh, it was, it was amazing, man. Metallica was only supposed to play for an hour and a half, and they put on a full two-hour show. It was I insane. It. Yeah, I was so was. jealous, man. I was emailing Teddy on Friday, folks. He said, my weekend starts in two hours, man. I'm going to Lollapalooza. I said, oh, I got to get to a live show again <laughs> soon, man. That, that's like my favorite thing to do in life. I was jealous. That's great. You had a great time, man. Uh, okay, and we jump right into it, man. So uh, where do you want to kick things off? We got some action in the dollar. We got some action in crude in a big way. What are you looking at on Monday? It's great we talked to you on Monday, man, because we usually talk to you on Wednesday. So maybe you can walk us through you know, how you start in the week and what you're looking at. Um, well, this is a good Monday to talk about because we had both a weekly close, a monthly close, and a daily close on Friday. You know, So um, especially, remember, on Wednesday, anyone that watched uh, when we were talking last week, I mentioned how technically – the, the yen was actually setting up for a sell. Boy, did it really ever sell off, you know? So, um, and then you have this whole take as far as the bonds as well. You know, we talked about this head and shoulders pattern on the daily basis that, you know, I mean, with this wishy-washy Fed speak that's going on and saying how you have to follow, the, they're going to follow the data. Well, shouldn't you always be following the data? <laughs> like, isn't that yeah. exactly what your job is? You know, so if, what, what does that mean? During other periods, you're having periods of introspection or something? I mean, I, I don't know what that means at all. You know, so the market rates, the fact that it's being pumped up the way it is right now, it's it's we have a divergence as far as the fun, what's going on fundamentally. You have a Fed that says we're still going to raise rates, but watch the data. And but somehow we're getting, you know, higher bond pricing, you know, and that's definitely a reflection of what's going on in the dollar. But then you can also see 
where the extremes are. Like the yen sold off really big over the past yeah. um, few sessions. Okay, so did the, the uh, Swiss. If you notice how the euro rallied versus the pound, the pound is rallying pretty strong. The euro has only had a 50% correction from its last swing high to the past swing low of a couple um, sessions back. Okay, so that's showing how where the strength really is in these other currencies. And I think that as if if the dollar still is under pressure, you're going to see a more accelerated move in, say, the pound and the yen and the Swiss. But the euro, you're not going to see as much of that, you know. And the same thing with the Aussie and the New Zealand, you know. So I think it's going to be interesting to, to watch the bonds because if, if this is just a market correction in the dollar and the interest rate sector and even in the crude oil market, we should be coming into a bottoming area, you know, or a topping area in the bonds. So if we're going to push this, you know, either we're going to have one more leg and really hit the extreme or we're talking about a change in trend that could last a couple of months. I mean, if you look at the, the bonds themselves and the 10 year put on a monthly buy signal, you know, so now remember it's a monthly basis. So that doesn't mean you can't have a correction off of that move, you know, but that's that right. could also mean that we, we, if that's true, then we're going to have a, a higher trending market for bond prices for the next like three to six months. That, this doesn't make sense when you have a Fed that's so supposed to be leaning on at least a half a point three more times before the year is out, you know. Yeah. So um, so that's there's that that's a very big question on what's going on right now. So I think people have to really keep those in their in their in their uh, back, you know, in the background on what they're trading when it comes to the different currency crosses. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, the move in the the note in the bond market. I had I got the thirty year up here on a monthly going back to on think or swim. It goes back to ninety six, I think. And really, the run mm -hmm. higher looks like it started in ninety nine, right? Um, mm -hmm. And we're just literally almost still sitting at that trend line. Got a little below it, but a bounce as mm -hmm. traders doesn't seem too outlandish when basically we were just trading in the thirty year. The numbers in the thirty year are just bonkers, man. We we're at yeah. one ninety one. In March of 2020, when you got that acceleration, even if you just take where we were at the end of 2020, we're at about 174, 170, something like that, and we're at 144 still. Um, mm -hmm. So the moves have just been remarkable where maybe we do get some bounces within a trend, but some of these bounces, the trend is just so large that maybe those right. bounces are a little bit larger than Absolutely. we're used to with the Absolutely. trend intact, right? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, crude. Crude is moving a lot this morning, man. What's your take on the market in crude? We're coming down to another critical area, catching a little bit of a bounce in the last few minutes. We just had a 92 handle. Now we got a 94 handle. Uh, mm -hmm. What's your action on crude? Even this morning, uh, down down decent. I know it's under pressure it's right now. I think it's just a little bear trap. I think it's, it's testing support, but it's basing. I still am bullish on crude. I don't see that it's not going to you know, skip back. I, th I could see crude easily get back above 105 to 110 in a, in a heartbeat, you know, so I'm not comfortable at these levels. I'd be, I'll be, i tell you what, I'd be very cautious trying to sell the crude oil market right now. I would, in fact, I wouldn't even take a short trade in the market at all. Unless As a technical trader myself, I agree, you know, it's pretty much at a pretty critical area. In this area, you know, you can pick whew, 10, 15 areas on this chart, basically, that you could have bought at this area and it's bounced mm -hmm. or held um, going back to almost the better part of this year. Man, and and, and the bonds and the tenure are influencing crude too. Sure. You realize that as interest rates, remember we talked about this months ago about how, what was helping to drive the crude prices. If the Fed raises rates, the cost of carryover for crude goes up. So right now the market rate, even though the Fed just raised three quarters of a point, the market rate has actually gone down. So that means the price, the cost to carry over for, and you got to realize we're coming in, you know, there's always rollovers in the oil market, you know, and the spot prices and, like, and stuff like that. So every month, that's a big reflection because as that comes off every month, that's gone. Now you have a new interest rate. Well, financing for oil right now is cheaper now than it was two, three months ago, you that's know. a great take, so, You know, so that's why I think you're getting this suppression in crude price. It's artificially being suppressed because the cost of carryover is being decreased, you know. So, I mean, that's it's just like the cost of gasoline locally. I mean, the, if the federal, you know, uh, taxes reduce plus also certain state taxes, okay, the price of gas has come down, but that's only because you're not paying the taxes. The plastic price of gas didn't come down. The taxes were removed, you know. So that's where that pricing, and I think I'm looking at it in that same perspective. 
It's a great point. I mean, the, the, the cost of capital, right? The interest rate. I mean, we mm -hmm. talk about it. My dad always says in the show, it's like, what can you buy? Right. And, and that translates to everything, man, even companies themselves. Apple's got a four part bond sale out there today um, mm -hmm. because interest rates are low enough that they can push out that paper, man, um, and use that capital as opposed to the hundred and eighty billion dollars in cash they got on their books. So, mm -hmm. so the Fed, back to the Fed real quick, because you made some great points, man, and I completely agree. Yeah. They should be data dependent. I think what, you know, the market's taking all the optimism there, and we got like 20 seconds, Teddy. You know what? Mm -hmm. Maybe we can bring you back, all right? Do you, have, do you sure. got a few minutes? Perfect. Uh, yeah, Let's I, can, jump I can do it, yeah. Let's jump into the break, man, because I want to get, because we get the jobs number on Friday. We get CPI next yeah, we week, do. and if it's data dependent, let's have a little conversation about those two numbers. Folks, mm -hmm. head on over to the front page while we're on break for three minutes. Check out the Tiger Forex report. Teddy's got a new issue out this morning, and we'll be right back to finish up the show. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. And we got markets picking up in August, right where we left off in July. You get the NASDAQ 100 climbing a solid 150 points from the lows we got just in the last half hour. We're above 13,000. You're positive by 32 points right now. And the S&P's trying to make it right now. S&P's negative by just seven points after being lower by about 35. Uh, so, Teddy, talking about the fundamental news, we get jobs numbers on Friday. We get the CPI next week. The Fed said they're data dependent. 
Um, what are you looking for? Because I've been talking about maybe we see, you know, those they just become so important if the Fed is as they should be data dependent. It's all up in the air. Uh, what are you looking for for those numbers, whether it's jobs and then CPI next week and how that might shape the, the movement in these in these markets? The numbers. I mean, this is something we've been talking about for almost a year where I said as we move forward now, the, the, the main economic numbers are the biggest thing to watch now for the whole economy and all the markets you trade. Without a doubt, jobless claims and unemployment. And it was funny over the weekend, I was listening to some of the shows and I love to speak how especially those who are basically following the government being, don't worry, they're, they know what they're doing, everyone's panicking, whatever, um, saying, you know, well, yeah, well, now we know we're in a recession. Well, we've all known, we, everyone knows we've been in a recession for more than two months. You didn't need the data for that, you know? So, but the one thing I think you have to watch is definitely unemployment claims and unemployment, because they were saying how, well, we're at record at low unemployment. Well, okay, that's what we are right now, but the question is how long can unemployment stay as stable as it is with a contracting economy with high inflation like this? Layoffs have already started. You've already seen it in the financial sector over the past two months where Chase and a whole bunch of other um, places started already getting rid of people from their lending departments and all sure. kinds of banking sectors. So if you're doing it in white collar jobs, when, what happens when it starts trickling down into the other sectors of the economy? It's yeah. going to start to that ripple effect will be big. Now, I don't think it's going to be a big uptick yet, and it may not even have an uptick this month. But I think unemployment over the next two to three months for sure is going to start to go up, you know, on, especially on claims. And also, also the CPI, it's going higher. Inflation is here. Oof. CPI goes higher. Watch out, folks. And the right. jobs, yeah, Amazon. Amazon lost 99,000 workers last quarter, man. Right. Teddy, thank you so much, man. We look forward to talking to you on Wednesday. Sounds good. I do, too. All right, folks, check out the Tiger Forex report. Stay tuned.